Do you like the show and you want to make your own? Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create. Now, Anchor is going to distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. No minimum listenership needed. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Monday, December 5th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We are taking your calls this hour and your text. I'm going to fire up the text machine right now for you. It is 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. That is the number to text into the program this afternoon. Where do we start? We, we got to start with of course, the bowl bid was was announced yesterday. You know, after unofficially knowing and then officially knowing and everything in between, we know it's Marshall in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. I called it. By the way, I, I absolutely called it. I said Myrtle Beach Bowl. Here it is, Myrtle Beach Bowl. It just makes sense. I mean, come on. I think Huntington Mayor Steve Williams collects tax on many of the West Virginians that live in Myrtle Beach. I, I really do. It's, it's like a suburb of Huntington. Myrtle Beach is. That, yeah, they have a municipal tax as well. It, it comes right into City Hall. I mean, that's how close Huntington and Myrtle Beach are as far as, you know, just the connection between the two. So here it is. Marshall, six bowl appearance, six straight bowl appearance. 19th all-time in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. UConn, the opponent. How are we feeling about UConn? That's where I want to go today. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. How do we feel about Marshall taking on UConn? You know, the last time UConn was in a bowl, it was against Thundering Herd. So, hello, UConn. Welcome back to the bowls. Your opponent, once again, will be the Thundering Herd. Can you imagine starting out, you haven't been in a bowl since 2015, and like, okay, we're, we're in a bowl. Who do we have? Marshall. I wonder how they're feeling right now. How are the Huskies are feeling? I think the winner should get the, the loser's basketball team to come in and play a home game. So if Marshall wins, the, the men's team, the Huskies, have to come down to Huntington and play a basketball game. If Marshall loses, the Herd's got to go up to UConn and play a game. I like that kind of bet. Coming up on the program tonight, we're going to talk more about this. Again, I'm going to get your, your thoughts on where we're at with this. How we feeling? You get your ticket yet? You excited for the opponent? You excited for the location? But in the next few minutes... We're going to talk to the head coach of the reigning Class AAA state champion, Huntington Highlanders. Next season, they will be the defending and reigning champions. Right now, they are just the reigning champions. Huntington High, the number two seed, after sending Martinsburg packing in the semifinals, go to Wheeling Island Stadium and beat the number one seeded Parkersburg South team and do it by scoring 28 unanswered. It was a 3 nothing game, and I thought, okay, this is going to be a defensive game. I knew it would be defense. And then Huntington goes into the halftime with a 7-3 lead, getting a, a you know, turnovers were big, I think. But Huntington goes in with a 7-3 lead. I think just Huntington got stronger as that game progressed. And so we're going to talk to Billy Seals here in just a few minutes, get his thoughts on the championship. Congratulations to him and all the Highlanders. Uh, I noticed he got the the Gatorade bath. 
I think it was 20. I think that was Landon Miller who um, got him. So it's good to see Billy get the Gatorade bath. We'll get your texts and comments on that as well. Again, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. All right, let's start with the text line this hour. Texter wrote in and said, great to see Marshall in another game, but a 6-6 six and six UConn is underwhelming. Great location and a chance at a ninth win if they stay focused. Terrible TV time slot. Yeah, here's the deal. Monday, December 19th, it's going to be 2.30 p.m. So that means, for those of you not making the trip, take off work early, hang out with me at Roosters for a little bit, get your lunch, because that's probably where I'm going to be. 11.30 a.m., that's probably where I'm going to be at Roosters for this one. We'll see. And it's a 2.30 kick. It's in the middle of the work day. Now, if you're able to go, I know a lot of people that are able to go, maybe are in better situations, can have some vacation time squirreled away or have planned to do this. You can you can take off and go to the game. So for some, going on a Monday is not really a hardship. For some other herd fans, though, not necessarily the most travel friendly game. Only because it's not the it's not the location, it's not the the travel, it's the time. How many Hurt fans can actually take off and go see this game on, on a Monday? That's part of the reason why I I have a love hate relationship with the bowl games. Uh, the bowl games are a reward for the student athletes, right? But it's also a business trip. You got to go win the game. You have fun. You enjoy the experience. You earned it. You get to go and, and enjoy this opportunity. It might be the only time you get to go to a bowl game. And talking to Coach Huff yesterday, he said there were guys on his team that you know, haven't had a bowl experience yet. So, you know, they're going to try to make sure that the guys have a bowl experience, have fun. I mean, and that's great. I, I want the players to have an experience. I want them to have a great time. You know, just because I don't like all the bowls doesn't mean, well, it just means I don't like all the bowls. But it doesn't mean I don't want these kids to have fun. So, you know, I'm not – I'm not that apathetic towards all the bowls that we have in the middle of the week that nobody can go see. I just don't. I don't like the structure as, as much. I just don't. You know. I hope that we get closer to a, a true playoff system. You know, those games mean a little bit more. It's in a different structure now. Does that limit opportunities for other teams? Yeah. No. Sure, you're six and six. You're UConn. You get to go to a bowl game. I mean, you get to go. You 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 were you're five hundred, so you get to go to a bowl game. Yeah, I've always been, and I, I hopefully I've stayed consistent with this. I've always been of the mindset that you know there are too many bowls to begin with, and it's if you don't get a bowl, that's that's a poor reflection on your program. It's not. If you get a bowl, it's if you don't get a bowl. That's when you start looking at things. Like you, you didn't get a bowl. You didn't earn a bowl. You didn't do enough in the season to, to earn a bowl because there are so many bowls out there. We'll get your thoughts. Again, it's 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I don't want to douse anybody's joy on this. I don't, I don't want to rain on any parade here. It's just for – for me, there are a lot of bowl games out there. There's so many games here. Uh, by, by the way, well, we're going to have a lot of these games for you on ESPN 94.1 and 930. I know some of you can't go to games. Some of you can't just take off and, and go. So we're going to have the Marshall game. We're going to have plenty of the games. So you know, if you're in the office during a week, day, you can't maybe watch the games. You like to keep track of them. We're going to have them for you on the radio. So don't worry. We got you covered. So you won't miss any of the action. And for a lot of people, you love you love the pageantry of the bowls. And I get it. I like the playoff system coming up. I like the the playoff system that it might evolve into. That's where I'm at. When we continue, Billy Seals, head coach of the champion Huntington Highlanders, on this edition of The Drive. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. 
It was a game you heard right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. The number two seed, Huntington High, defeating the number one seed, Parkersburg South, 28-3 at Wheeling Island Stadium to win the 2022 West Virginia Class AAA State Championship. And the guy that got the Gatorade bath is now with us, the head coach of the Huntington Highlanders. Let me say this now, for the first time officially with you, the champion Huntington Highlanders. Um, a couple days later, how's it feel? Well, you know, I ain't really sunk in yet, I don't think. Uh, you know, you try to try to live in the moment uh, there Saturday, but I, Saturday was a blur to me. And I told, told my wife, and I told Mr. Senior, our AD today, you know, I don't really remember a whole lot about Saturday except, you know, we, were, we played really well and, and won. And, uh, you know, uh, just kind of a blur right now. So you got the Gatorade bath. It was 20, right? Landon Miller, right? Got you, got you with the Gatorade. Did I see that right? Yeah, tw- yeah Landon Miller got me, and, and uh, Khalif Ty got me the first time. Uh, those two guys, and then I got it again from Jesse Atkins and Robbie Martin. The only problem with the second time, they hit me in the head with the cooler. Put a pretty good little pump bottle on top of my head, but I guess it's working. Okay, so uh, I, I know Miller's uh, mom, so are you surprised it was – I mean, I'm not surprised it was Miller. I know his mom, so I'm not surprised it was him. Absolutely not. He had a big grin on his face, and, uh, man, I'll take that every day of the week. So it hasn't sunk in yet for you, but on that bus ride home, you know, what was just going through your mind is, um, yeah, you've been there before, and you've come really close, and now finally, you know, you and these kids are, are champions. You know, what was that bus ride home like for you as you were just maybe alone with your thoughts for a few minutes? Well, just reflecting back on the season and, you know, our, our young men just staying the course, continuing to believe in what we do, um, being great teammates to one another, um, you know, the fun they had at practice, the camaraderie, the, the locker room, and, um, you know, just really, really happy for our young men. Uh, they worked really, really hard in our program and, you know, are very, very coachable and understand football is a team game. It's not about – any one person and we got a you know we got a whole lot of kids in our team that can make plays so uh y'all just really really proud of them really proud of the Huntington community man we had an awesome crowd there on Saturday and we appreciate their support and uh glad we could bring a a football championship back to the city of Huntington this has been a long-term project for you as I alluded to you've been close before so it's not as if this is just a new experience but you've been close this has been a long-term project for you to get to this point where every year Huntington's now a contender, and Huntington better be mentioned in the conversation as a contender for a state championship. That was a lot of hard work from not just you, your your coaches, the administration, the young men that bought in. And I know the word changing the culture gets thrown around a lot, but I don't think you changed the culture. I think you just po- shown the way. Yeah, It wasn't – that the culture was bad. It's just these kids in this administration and this community needed someone to really point them out, point the way, hey, here's the way, here's the road to success, let's go. And it feels like everyone just jumped on board with you. Well, you know, first of all, I think it it comes down to um, leading young men in the right direction. And, um, you know, there's no substitute for hard work. There's no substitute from, from being coachable playing with grit and determination, um, you know, all those things that we instill in our young men here in our program. Um, and, and there's no secret. We got really good players here. They just needed some direction of what, what hard work looked like. And, uh, you know, football is not August to December. Football is from January to January. And, um, you know, our guys have bought into that. Um, you know, I got guys right now that are over in the weight room. Um, and we just finished Saturday. So uh, I, I usually give them off till January. Um, but our guys want to get back to work and, um, you know, go, go try to chase a, a title in 23. Billy Seals is with me, the head coach of the Victoria Huntington Highlanders, winning the uh, school's first football championship. I want to say it was a convincing win. Parkers ourselves a really good team. Just so you look at the score and you, you watch that game, it wasn't easy, but it, it felt like after a while that 
they had no answer for you, and your defense once again stepped up to the occasion every single time. Well, you know, all week long we had, uh, you know, our kids read the newspaper, social media, and, you know, um, all we kept seeing was how good Parkersburg South was on offense. Um, you know, and, and and our kids are prideful young men, and, uh, you know, they, they took that and, and uh, they felt challenged by that. I challenged them throughout the week. Um, there was a particular sports rider in Parkersburg that made a prediction that Parkersburg South would beat Huntington because Parkersburg South had too many weapons for Huntington. And, um, you know, our defensive guys took that personal and uh, played played really, really well on Saturday and just, uh, you know, really proud of our, our entire team. And to hold a team that was scoring – 65 points a game in the playoffs, three points. To speak volumes to what our, our young men uh, did on Saturday. And it felt like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it felt like as the game progressed, you got stronger or you were just, yeah, or they just wore down. What Which one was it? Or was it a combination of both? Well, I mean, I, I, we felt like about halfway through the third quarter. We saw it a little bit before the half, uh, but about halfway through the third quarter, we felt that they were really, really tired. Um, they weren't getting off blocks as well. They weren't running to the ball as well. They weren't as crisp on the routes offensively. And so sometimes when you run that hurry up, fast tempo offense, you can tempo yourself to death. And so, you know, it's great to run that high tempo offense if you're scoring in about three or four plays. But when teams are making you go 8, 10, 12, 13 plays to try to score, your, your tempo in yourself uh, and, and hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself, I believe. And uh, we just felt like that they got tired, and and our kids felt that. They they would come over the sidelines and tell us, uh, you know, Coach, they're, they're tired, they're done. And so you know, our offense did a great job, and Coach Crawford did a great job of, you know, continuing to pound away at them with Gavin, uh, Zah, and DeAndre. Let's talk about Zah for a second. Um he he knows how to he knows how to score a touchdown and make it look exciting, doesn't he? Well, I knew once he made that cut on that backer and the backer missed him, you know, you're not gonna catch him. And uh, you know, those kids from Park South are they're good athletes and, and uh, a couple of the kids had the angle on him. Uh, but he just he used every inch of that field and uh took a great angle himself to make it difficult for them to close the distance and uh Proud of that young man. You go back and look at him his freshman year in that state championship game, and uh, everybody wanted to criticize that young man when he was a freshman, and to come back and be the, uh, you know, the MVP of the state championship game as an all, uh, sophomore with 165 yards speaks volumes to that the young man's character and his integrity and his work ethic. And so, uh, really, really proud of Zod, man. Now, we're very blessed to have him in our program and looking forward to the next two years with him. Now, I know today is sort of bittersweet for you. It was uh, the team photo. This is probably going to be the last, maybe one of the last few times that the, this group of young men are, are together. Uh, I know it's got to be bittersweet for you. Every year is, I'm sure, bittersweet because, you know, you have new kids coming in, you have uh, kids leaving. But, uh, you know, is it is it just a little bit sweeter knowing now that, okay, I might not see some of these kids again on a daily basis, but – yeah, they they get to walk away champions now, and I'm sure that's a, a exciting feeling for you. It absolutely is, and um, you know they deserve all the credit. Um, you know they they stayed the course. Um, even you know you take this senior group uh, during the COVID year, we go three and six, man. And I know that there were people saying, you know, I uh, I was here, from, you know, time for Coach Seals to go. Can't get the program where it needs to get to, and. You know, those guys, we love each other, and uh, we've always got each other's back. And uh, for them to do what they've done the last two seasons, I mean, they're 26-2 and two the last two seasons with a state runner-up and a state championship. So uh, the senior class has been special, and obviously the young talent we have ha- has helped us, um, you know, in our program as well. So uh, just really a bittersweet day to take that photo and get, you know, uh, some of the seniors were saying, when they were turning their equipment in today, man, uh, you know, you could see it in their eyes that it was bothering them that they were they were putting that helmet down for the last time as a Huntington Highlander. 
Billy Seals is with me, the head coach of the West Virginia class AAA state champion Huntington Highlanders. So now comes the fun stuff. I'm, I'm sure there are going to be uh, all sort of events here soon, parades, you know, everything that goes to, you know, winning a championship here. Uh, is there anything that the community can do to help? I, I know that rings are important to kids, and there are all kinds of other things as well you like to try to do to, to commemorate the moment. Is there anything that maybe – you know, the, the community can do to help you or to try to do some things that you'd like to see happen for these kids? Absolutely. I mean, it, based, based on the WVSSAC rules, you know, we, we can't, we can't pay for rings for our young men. Um, you know, we obviously have some kids in, in our program that, you know, their parents can't afford to get them one. You know, I would just ask the community to reach out, uh, help our program to ensure that every kid, uh, gets what they deserve, and um, you know they can get in contact with me at school at 304-528-6411 if they want to discuss any of that. But uh, I know the Huntington community is going to step up for our young men and ensure every one of our young men gets a championship ring. And so I guess that's probably the greatest pressing need we have uh, once we get the rings order and find out how much they are. So if anyone wants to uh, help out with that, they can get in touch with you to – you know, see if you can, uh, you know, you, you can work arrangements out. Uh, I think that would be great if someone would like to step up and, and help make that a possibility for these kids because, I mean, rings are important. I mean, you, you might think, okay, it's just a piece of jewelry, but it, it, that's that's a timeless keepsake here. This, this is a moment that these kids might never, ever experience anything like this again. The fact that they got to experience is a, a once-in-a-lifetime, you know, event for them because it's not promised. I mean, next year – yeah, they might not get back the kids that are still with you. You hope they do, but you know, this is a once in a lifetime event. You can't take it away from them, but you still, you know, you want to make sure the kids remember it because I mean, this is not just something that they did for themselves, for the school. I mean, the whole community. This is something we all can take pride in. Absolutely, and and these young men are they're not only great football players, but they're great young men. Um, couldn't ask for a better group to coach. Uh, very blessed to be here at Huntington High School with our, with our fabulous kids. And, you know, Huntington High is a, a tremendous school with great leadership and great young men and women in our school. So, uh, you know, we definitely want to make sure that they get that opportunity to, to get, as they call it, the bling. Um, and, and they want those, you know, those rings are important to them. So, you know, we're going to make sure that uh, when they get those, man, that they're, they're proud to have those and, and going to show those things off to their kids later on in their life i just want some championship swag you know that it's just you know and i'm sure everyone else does as well um you got any plans for that just yet where people can buy something to maybe um commemorate this and uh anything that maybe goes through the school that uh, helps the program yeah we're working on that right now with our business classes here at Huntington high school miss uh, alicia lewis runs that and and they're going to they're working currently on um t-shirts and long sleeve shirts and and sweatshirts that will probably be available online here within the next couple of days. And I'm sure that um, that'll be posted on um, Huntington High's Facebook uh, page as well as their Twitter account for an order form um, if you want some of the uh, 2022 Huntington Highlander State Championship uh, apparel. So uh, we'd love to see the whole city of Huntington in that. And we greatly appreciate the city and all everything that they've done for our program. Billy Seals is with me, the head coach of the Huntington Highlanders, victorious on Saturday at Wheeling Island Stadium, defeating number one seed Parkersburg South 28-3 to claim the first state championship, which, you know, I knew you'd do it. I mean, when you you came here all those years ago, I mean, that was the plan. I knew you'd do it. Well, it was the plan. Um, you know, when you're in it, number one, you're in it to impact young men's lives, but you're also – in it, in it to win football games. I mean, it, we're all competitors. We all, uh, that's why we coach is because we're competitors and we'd love to see young men um, get the accomplishments that they deserve. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of our program. You know, we've been there three times since 2013. We've been to five Final Fours in the, since 2013. And, uh, you know, our, our we were in here in a staff meeting earlier and we were already talking personnel for the 2023 football season. And so our guys are already back chomping at the bit as a coaching staff to, to make sure that we put our young men in the best position possible next season 
for them to, to make another run. But we're going to take it week by week, and, and uh, next season it'll be 1-0 at the, at, at the end of the week every week. Okay, so you're confirming you'll be back for the 2023 season. Tennessee is not called yet to uh, ask you if you want to come coach the volunteers. That has not happened. Well, I'm not smart enough to coach at, at Tennessee or any of those places anyway. I'm happy right here at Huntington High. And, uh, you know, this this will be where I end my career at, um, whatever how long that's going to be. You know, um, they name stadiums after uh, after successful coaches. They build statues. You know, they put plaques in you know in hallways. So I'm sure you're getting something like that here soon. Well, you know, all that's great, but you know, the most rewarding thing is is uh, you know the you go back to the Martinsburg game here at Huntington a couple of weeks ago and seeing our sidelines and our end zone just with. 50, 60 former guys that played for me, and it, and it was guys all the way back to 2010. Um, you know, just to see those guys come back and know that our program had a good impact on them, and you know they still love Huntington High and love the football program. You know, that's that's the most important thing for me, and uh, you know, just continuing to lead young men to be uh, uh, better husbands and fathers, and uh, later on in in, in their life. Billy Seals, my guest. He's the head coach of the championship Huntington Highlanders. Coach, thanks for doing it. You've you've been doing it right since day one. Uh, you know, when when I was at a different radio station and we were doing this, you you've been doing it right since day one. And uh, I I don't know if there's anyone, maybe maybe your wife is more happy for you than I am. But uh, she she can be number one in this. I'm pretty close. I hope because you know you've been doing it right, and uh, I think that uh, it shows. Well, I mean, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way to do things. And, uh, you know, we're going to run a respectable program that, you know, um, has young men on the field that, that have a lot of class. And, you know, it's it's kind of like a Saturday after the state championship game, our guys are picking up tape off the floor um, that they had used and throwing it in a trash can and, you know, leaving the locker room better than the way you found it. And so, you know, all those things, you win with class and you lose with class. And, um, you know, we just preach that to our kids. and. Uh, you can learn a lot from the sport of football that's going to go with you the rest of your life. And so we've learned a lot of those lessons. And, uh, again, our young men are better young men because of the sport of football. Billy Seals, head coach of the championship, Huntington Highlanders, uh, congratulations once again. I can't wait for all the signage and everything to go up. Uh, this one doesn't go away. You get to keep this one forever. Yes, sir. Very proud of our program, our coaching staff, support staff, administration, and more important, you know, most importantly, our players, man, they deserve all the credit. Credit, and what a great group of young men I got to work with. Good talking to you, Billy. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, Billy Seals, head coach of the Huntington Highlanders, defeating Parkersburg South twenty-eight three on Saturday to claim the twenty twenty-two West Virginia Class AAA State Championship. Uh, keep an eye on the Huntington High social medias for official gear. All of that helps the program. That helps the school. That uh, goes. If you get it through the school, that helps the school that goes to the Highlander program. So uh, I know you've seen probably some stuff out there already. Uh, wait till the school posts these th- things. And if you want to get some gear, uh, try to do it for the school. Also, if you're interested in helping these young men with championship rings, things of that nature, uh, get a hold of Coach. And uh, you, know, you can discuss uh, how you might be able to help out. And uh, let's make sure all these kids get rings. Uh, it's a big deal. It's, it's always a big deal. When you win, you win a championship, you win something, it's always a big deal. So let's make sure that these kids uh, get taken care of. We'll get your text in, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. we got more coming up. It's The Drive on ESPN, 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on with this Monday, December 5th edition. I am your host, Paul Swan, here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We will take your text now, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. From the text line, I heard that Marshall turned down a bowl invite from the Independence Bowl. Is this true? I cannot say that it was true. I can't say that it wasn't true. Uh, talking to Christian Spears yesterday, uh, there was a, a media availability yesterday uh, before the uh, football banquet, and he explained a little bit. There was some jockeying because, you know, you had seven bowl-eligible teams, and so 
you know, you have seven different distinct personalities jockeying for bowls, why, you know, this bowl makes sense for, for its school. And Christian pointed out that a lot of people told him, you know, go to Myrtle. He wanted to go to one of the Sunbelt aligned bowls. So there are tie-ins that the Sunbelt has with several of the bowls. And athletic director wanted to go to one of those bowls. So, you know, I don't know if Marshall was slotted to go into the Independence Bowl, so I can't say that was true or not. Uh, I don't think it's really about the payout. Uh, it's more about there's a – in the grand scheme of things here, if I understand this correctly, and I'll try to get some clarification on this here, how it works in the Sun Belt, but it, it, in, my, in my past experience here, it's, it's basically, you know – the bowl, you know, Marshall's going to get its share, but there is, you know, there's a group pot, I believe. Again, again, I'm just going on past experience here. I'm not, you know, I'm not that into the finances here of like, you know, so, okay, so Marshall's going to get this amount of dollars and this school's only going to get this amount of dollars for going to this game. I don't think it works exactly like that. I mean, why well, do you think Notre Dame is staying independent? Because Notre Dame can keep all the Notre Dame money. Um, Myrtle Beach Bowl, it's a location. I think you keep that in mind. It's a Sunbelt tie-in game. It's a good location for the student-athletes. I get it. The television. I've heard that from a lot of people today, yesterday, that oh, I hate the time. I hate the, the matchup. I don't know if – how much of an impact – unless you're in the upper-tier bowls, I don't know how much of an impact really one day to the next is going to have in, in these, uh, in, in these I don't want to say lesser-tier bowls, but, I mean, if you're playing in the Rose Bowl, you're playing in the Rose Bowl. If you're playing in the uh, All-State Sugar Bowl, you're playing in the All-State Sugar Bowl. If you're playing in the Cure Bowl, I mean, that might pique some interest there. That might pique some interest here. That's a good question. I'm going to file that on away. Yeah. How does this bowl game, this time slot, help with recruiting, or how does it not help with recruiting? So let me let me slot that on away. I want to get you better answers on that one. I mean, I could throw some stuff on the wall and see if it sticks, but I'd rather, you know, just be honest with you here. I don't know if there was any uh, tr- bowl trading going on here, if the Independence Bowl was – was in the mix here, and, you know, if television slotting had anything to do with this, matchup had anything to do with this, or, you know, this was just a better opportunity for the program. Back to the text line. Uh, this is regards to Huntington High. Texter wrote in and said, I drive Cabell County bus, and this is a program that has been a joy to haul the games. First-class kids and coaches. I'm not surprised by that. I appreciate the, the text. Huntington High is run by a, a head coach that values these things. You know, you do things right. You put the hard work in. I don't think Billy's overbearing. But you put if you're going to do it, you put the hard work in. And you do it right. I mean, football, if, if you get the right coach – you have the right personnel, you have the right people running your football program, football can be a great opportunity for young men to, to one, become mentored. I mean, that's something I'm sure a lot of kids, you know, desperately need. You know, I can't speak to each situation on the team, but, you know, if you have good people able to – to coach these young men, to mentor these young men. I mean, especially if you, you send your kid off to college. I mean, something that I was listening to Coach Huff say yesterday when we were talking to him, you know, just because it's uh, okay, hey, um, you know, you're a senior now. We're done. Thanks. No, they they were taking the time to make sure that as the seniors – transition away from Marshall into the next steps of their life that they know how to transition. 
I thought that was important. Not just, okay, hey, th- hey, you know, thanks. Thanks, we appreciate you. You know, thanks. Bye. Uh, so I was I was happy to hear that from Coach Huff. So I'm happy to hear these kids are, uh, are really upstanding kids. And that's not just – and I didn't think it was Coach Speak to begin with and Coach Seals. But you know, knowing him, you know, he's going to insist on these young men being – first class and you know you hear good things about them 304-396-TALK 304-396-8255 I'll try to get some clarification on um, why this bowl was really the bowl because let's be honest a lot of these bowl slots the television isn't prime time and not everybody can get those slots so why do you take the Myrtle Beach Bowl is it more about the student athlete and the experience? Is it more about trying to get more eyeballs on the TV? Is it about the fan experience? I was trying to get a little bit of that yesterday, and I think, you know, the impression I got was it was student athlete focused for sure, trying to focus on the young men. More coming up. It's the drive. ESPN ninety four point one and AM nine thirty. This is the drive with Paul Swan on ESPN ninety four point one FM and AM nine thirty. We're wrapping up today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can find me on social media, Twitter, at Paul Swan. We also have a Facebook page for you. It's called The Drive with Paul Swan. I hope you can find it there. We post podcasts. I'm very active on Twitter, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. If you don't, now's the time to find out. I'll be coming to a social media platform near you. I've been looking at other social media platforms, trying to figure out, okay, where's everyone running to? Because, you know, Twitter is sort of a hot topic right now. It's a hot button topic, the way that uh, the new ownership has uh, decided to run Twitter, which uh, I haven't seen really anything noticeable just yet to um, not impact, you know, what I do with it. Sports journalist, journalist, sports journalist. Love the Twitters. So I've been looking for a new network. Like, okay, if I got to go set up shop somewhere else, where can I go? I, I've tried something called Mastodon. If you're on Mastodon, message me on Twitter or something. Let me know. Because I've tried Mastodon, and it's different. I thought about trying some of the other networks, that, you know, and I sign up, and there's nobody there. It's just crickets there, so I go back to Twitter. So I'm very active on Twitter. I'll do game updates when I'm at a game. I'll retweet interesting things. Occasionally, I'll break something and then I have to fix it. All on Twitter, at Paul Swan. And, of course, uh, we tweet out podcast links as well. If you haven't uh, started listening to the podcast, it's probably because you didn't know it was there or you listen to the show live every day. So if you miss a show, and I do a show, and you missed it. I'll put it up there on the podcast. Most days. It, it's been hit or miss. He's like, yeah, look, it's look, we've had a lot of ball games and other stuff. It's been hit or miss. I'll do better. So, hey, I appreciate everyone being with me here today on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Uh, a couple items uh, that came across today. The Sun Belt's pretty proud of this, so they sent out a release. Four Sun Belt men's basketball programs are ranked in the top 100 of the first NCAA net rankings of the year. There are two teams in the top 40. Marshall is not among those two teams in the top 40. Southern Miss is the highest rated Sun Belt team at number 31. James Madison comes in at number 40. Marshall is number 60. And Louisiana, the choice to win the Sun Belt, is 89. So the three newcomers, two from Conference USA and then James Madison, are among the top four of the high-rated net teams. Makes sense to me. I always thought if Marshall could get it rolling, this would be a, a basketball league that Marshall would definitely be one of the standout teams. And We'll see once we get into conference play. We haven't seen conference play just yet. We'll see how Marshall fares. But I feel good about Marshall in the Sun Belt right now. James Madison is going to be tough. Southern Miss is going to be tough. Uh, Louisiana. 
I think James Madison and Southern Miss, early, early, I think those are the two teams that I would sit there and think, okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna be in contention for a title, you got to get past some of these teams, and, and Southern Miss is gonna be one of the hardest, and James Madison is gonna be one of the toughest as well, I think. So and I'm not saying Louisiana won't be, it just Southern Miss and, and James Madison probably the top two threats I think right now for the Thundering Herd. Marshall is leading the Sun Belt. Ranking seventh nationally in rebounds per game with 43.12. Also, top five nationally in assist to turnover ratio, third with a, a plus 182. Assist per game, fifth with 20. And offensive rebounds per game, fifth at 15.12. So, Thundering Herd doing work on the basketball court. A roster move today. Oh, by the way, I really didn't get a chance to get into this, and I should have. How about the Bengals? First and foremost, who day? How about those Bengals? Beating Patrick Mahomes, not not for the first time, not for the second time, but for the third straight time. And then we got some sad news today. First of all, the Bengals look really good. They can keep this up. They're going to win the division. They're definitely a lock for a wild card. I don't, I don't think that's going to be a problem, but... They could win. They still have Buffalo. They got to get past Buffalo. They still got Baltimore. Yes, they got the Clowns coming up. So you got to take care of the business with the Clowns first. If they can't get past the Clowns, then you know, I don't know if any of this matters. But the Clowns are coming up. The Bengals waived Kevin Huber today. He was there since 2009. Played in a team record 216 games. Had a streak of 138 consecutive games from 2014 to 2022. He's the career leader in every major statistic for punting. Total punts, 1,011. Punting yards, 45,766. That's crazy. His gross average was 45.27. His net average was 40.34. And punts inside the opponent's 20-yard line, 346. He is um, he's he's a he's a Bengal through and through. So, unfortunately, um, business transaction here. Kevin Huber uh, no longer a Bengal. What an amazing career with the Bengals. So uh, hopefully that guy will uh, whatever he does next, he'll be very successful at. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Drive on ESPN ninety four point one and AM nine thirty. Back tomorrow. We'll do it all over again. I might have a I might have a surprise guest tomorrow. I might have a surprise. He's a guy that's been on a few times. He he's a pretty big deal. I might have a surprise guest tomorrow. Don't hold me to it, but I think it's happening. Good night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and the Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.